Shall we do Free State of Jones? Yes. Okay, because again, this is interesting because you and I saw this together and you, you turned up to the screening and I said, oh, why are you doing this because we're doing an interview for it? And you said, no, just because you were interested. I'm just interested in the period, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, True story, uh, uh, set uh, in American Civil War, inspired by the life of Newton Knight, played here by Matthew McConaughey with a very convincingly wiry beard and sort of bedraggled look. When we meet him, he's a nurse um, uh, on the battlefield. And it's a story of a rebellion against the Confederacy uh, in Jones County, Mississippi, um, that after the, uh, after the militia have been taking produce and taking people's homesteads, um, Matthew McConaughey's character leads this group into a swamp, essentially, where they form a sort of ragtag, initially, resistance band that then becomes a kind of guerrilla-like coalition of uh, black and white. And what Matthew McConaughey does is to say, look, actually, the real bad guys in these in this story is landowners is people who have money it's you know it's nothing to do with uh, with race everything is to do with economics and they effectively found the free state of jones here's a clip from this day forward we declare the land north of the pascagoula swamp south of enterprise and east of the pearl river to the alabama border to be a free state of jones yeah. Yeah. And as such, we do hereby proclaim and affirm the following principles. Number one, no man ought to stay poor so another man can get rich. Number two, no man ought to tell another man what he's got to live for or what he's got to die for. Number three, what you put in the ground is yours to tend and harvest, and ain't no man ought to be able to take that away from you. Number four. Every man's a man. You can walk on two legs. You're a man. It's as simple as that. So, what a, what a voice. You know, uh, yeah, great. And actually a very, very good performance. And, uh, you know, uh, in many ways, well directed by Gary Ross. It is uh, a very, very interesting story. There are some great performances in it, not least Gugu and Bartiro, who I think is terrific. There's one, there's one fleeting scene in which she smiles in a, at a particular moment, and the whole screen just lights yeah, up. It's mean, fantastic. She, Remember, so Gugu and Bartiro, just to, so she, that, she's the star of Belle. Belle, yes, of course. Yeah, well, I, I think she done, but that was that was the first thing I'd yeah. seen her in, and we were sort of both just very, very impressed by her in that. And she's really good in this, and she definitely holds her own in it. Um, and the the story is very polemical, and it goes through the sort of complexities of. You know, the idea of independence and the 40 acres of mule and then that being and people backsliding in the way in which politics is basically sort of run by people who say one thing and then end up doing something else. And so it is a film. It's a story that is full of disenchantment, but is also full of, you know, a, a very strange form of hope of that declaration that you heard there, which is one of the most declarative moment of the film. So. There's an awful lot to like in it. And incidentally, the, the scenes of battle, the scenes of war are, I mean, you know, we do live in a post-Saving Private Ryan world nowadays, but the battle scenes are pretty, they're tough, aren't they? I mean, you know, yeah, you get... Yeah, yeah, and actually, interesting, they, they they make it feel like the forerunner of the First World War, the trench mm -hmm. warfare that comes up, and it's yeah. absolutely tough. Very yeah, good. and the stuff in the sort of, in the, in the mobile hospitals, which, which is great. The problem is that... Be <sighs> Because the story is attempting to tell a story which which is relevant beyond its immediate temporal uh, thing, what happens is you're about 20 minutes into the story and it suddenly jumps forward 80 odd years to a court case which is playing out, which is to do with um, uh, an illegal marriage that or an allegedly illegal marriage that will somehow as the thing for that will you know relate back to what we're seeing. And in the end, it's an interesting postscript to the story. But I have to say, my feeling about the way that the narrative kept interrupting itself with John Ford was misguided. What I kept thinking was, this story doesn't need this embellishment. It doesn't need this tricksy messing around with time frames. 
it just needs you to tell the story because you have the players, you have the the subject matter, you have the moment. I mean, it is a relevant story. It has, you know, it has a, a historical moment. And I just, it didn't feel to me like this is an ambitious structure. It felt like this is a flawed structure that 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 just needs somebody to go and go, no, sorry, th that that's not part of this story. It's like they lost faith in in the central. Oh, you see, that's, you see, that's a fascinating phrase. I had exactly that same feeling. I think, I think Matthew McConaughey's character is so extraordinary. Is so what? It's like a Robin Hood character. It's like you know, told from the Civil War, which is such an amazing story anyway. And it's like they can't just stick with it and tell the story of the Free State of Jones. Jones being one of the, the sort of the county, uh, which is really, really strange. Very, very peculiar, and ultimately disappointing, but still very watchable. <laughs> yes, I mean, I would, I would still encourage people to go and see it because there is enough good stuff in there, but it's not as good as it should have been.